I would like to invite Mr. Santosh Kanna, sir, our HOD Department of Therapeutics, to share a few words about our webinar. Sir, please. Good morning. Uh, we have a good session of sleep shapes. This is a very important resource that you understand as we have professionals and students. So I don't think that any of the curriculum have dealt this in detail. In student, maybe a physiotherapy or maybe an occupational therapy curriculum or prosthetic and orthotic curriculum, you have a, a glimpse of it, but it is not actually dead. Uh, so, very important that uh, we do. So, very interesting for us to know this, and uh, I also also whom we are working together, and uh, he is a very good on disseminating uh, appropriate technology. So, uh, it's my honor and privilege to Thank you, sir. I mean, basically, he is the physiotherapist. And uh, now he is working in the Motivation India organization as South Asia Regional Clinician. He is a well-known resource person for many of us, but still it's uh, my privilege to introduce to you all. So he is a trainer for the ISWP certified programs, especially the wheelchair services related. He is a trainer. He has completed many levels in the training program. I would like to invite Mr. Sudhakar Govindaswamy to take the session. Thank you. Sir, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kurinji. Good morning, all. Uh, am I audible, Kurinji? Hello? Am I, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're audible. Oh, thank you. Okay, so thank you. Uh, sir, yes, sir. You're audible. Yes, sir. You're audible. Thank you. Thank you, both of you. Uh, it, is, it is our privilege and uh, our honor to associate with NITMAD and uh, NITMAD Occupational Therapy College to disseminate this uh, valuable information sir, with the knowledge and uh, we are we are happy to be part of this and thank you so much uh, for inviting and uh, for organizing this such a need needful webinars and then i hope uh, nitmad is doing a webinar series and this is also one of the part of that webinar series so i'm happy to be part of this thank you so i'm going to share my re re uh, presentation now See my screen. Can you can you see my presentation? Anybody? My presentation is visible. Uh, yes, it is coming, sir, but it's not in the full screen mode. Yeah. Now. Yes. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Oh. Yes. Yeah. So. Today's topic, as we all well know, this uh, we are going to just discuss overview about the appropriate wheelchair. That's what we are going to discuss. And uh, before going to uh, that, I just I would like to uh, tell about who is who we are and where I'm coming from. And uh, we are a we are a regional office of the Motivation Charitable Trust in UK. And uh, we our approach is to provide appropriate wheelchairs uh, in India and outside India. And since 2011, we could uh, deliver around 18,000 plus wheelchairs in India. 
and we our main motto is to work with the partner organizations uh, and the government organization because as a single organization the to meet the huge need in india it is very difficult and uh, the right approach is the partnership approach that's what we believe in to provide a right vehicle and right way approach and we are also one of the expert organization invited by who to draft some of the wheelchair guidelines followed that we have contributed to develop the wheelchair packages which we are going to uh, the contents we are going to see in the following uh, sessions so this is where we are coming from as a wheelchair expert backgrounds and uh, as a part of the content today so we are going to see what is appropriate wheelchair some of you might aware about and it's it's a kind of revision and emphasize what exactly it does mean it and uh, we are going to discuss all about the wheelchair users and different types of wheelchairs in a different perspective and uh, we will discuss about the WHO's eight step approach what what does it mean and how it is uh, going to give an appropriate wheelchair for people and from there from the eight step approach we are going to discuss about the assessment and the measurement small information about the importance of what why we need and what we are going to do and a similar way in after the assessment any adaptations or postural support to devices in wheelchair what are the common things uh, people required in the wheelchair so these are the basic things we are going to discuss in the wheelchair yeah so wheelchair <laughs> So this is the common terminology everybody heard about. Even if you tell to the common people also say, I, I will donate the wheelchair. And wheelchair means it is a chair with the wheels. Even many of us read, even when I was reading long, long ago, <laughs> wheelchair is a chair with a wheel and it helps for the mobility. Or we read in a little advanced uh, definition, it is an assistive device giving for a mobility to improve a quality of life. These are the different definitions we read. Yes, it is right. Actually speaking, it is right. But adding to that, what is appropriate wheelchair? So that's what we are going to see today's uh, session. So an appropriate wheelchair, it is not just a chair with the wheels. It should uh, meet the user's need. User's need could be, it can be posture, it can be mobility or transport or whatever it could be. And it should meet the environmental condition. So wherever the person is living, the wheelchair should be suiting their environment. If the person is living in a kind of hilly area or uneven surfaces or a kind of coastal area or in a plain surfaces or in a office areas. So what kind of environment they are living or what kind of environment they are uh, living in. So that should meet their need of the environment too. And secondly, uh, we know the proper fit and postural support the person is too small or too big or any extra supports required so this all things should be uh, incorporated in that particular wheelchair then then it is called as an appropriate wheelchair also it should be safe and durable wherever they are using it can be it can be environment it can be house wherever it is the wheelchair should be safer enough not in study or not uh, breaking easily or something and uh, in another term it should be applied within the country and maintained within the country so the spare parts and the local servicing can be available within the country so if if all these criteria are meeting in one wheelchair that is called an appropriate wheelchair for that particular user so because the every wheelchair uh, has a different different options and different different uh, uh, like uh, uh, what to say the extra supports are available because the manufacturers has provided the different types of uh, wheelchairs but again whether it is good or bad if you say every wheelchair is good but whether it is appropriate we need to see appropriate in terms of whether that wheelchair is suiting for a particular person so that's how the appropriate definition uh, appropriate wheelchair definition is coming from so to summarize a wheelchair appropriate wheelchair should meet the user's need and the environmental conditions and then it should give a proper fit and postural support and it should be safe and durable while using and it should be maintained and obtained within the country so these all features if a wheelchair is uh, having then it is called an appropriate wheelchair for the user yeah so we we know what is appropriate wheelchair now so what do you mean by inappropriate wheelchair so in another terminology if you see too bulky you can see in this picture too, too large for a person it can be adult or it can be child maybe some of the uh, uh, people with disabilities you can see their physique is very small but the wheelchair if you see it is so big they are just 
just inside the wheelchair, not just uh, outside the wheelchair, are just easily to push. So that means if a wheelchair is too large or bulky or difficult to push themselves, then it is called an inappropriate wheelchair and does not provide a support to for a posture. It can be a uh, trunk or it can be head or it can be seat, whatever if it is not providing, that is also not appropriate. And if if the seat height, you can see this child, the seat height, if you see, just to get down, he may find difficulty. So if it is too high or too low, if any seat is there for a wheel, wheelchair user, then that hindering to do some work in front of the table, to eat in front of the table, or do some work in front of anything. So those things called as inappropriate wheelchair and not supporting that environment and breaks down very easily maybe the person got the wheelchair maybe yesterday or a month ago and then if it is breaking very quickly then that may not be appropriate for the person so if you find you guys any any of you are finding a person is using the wheelchair in these kind of features then it is inappropriate for that particular person so it may be large or not providing a support or seat height is too uh, higher or it is not supporting their environment if you find any of these then that person need a correct wheelchair and correct supports so that is where our roles comes as a professionals we have to get into the picture and say your wheelchair is having some issues for you and then you you need to do some alterations or you need to do some modification or you need to change the wheelchair so that kind of information if you provide the user is more than happy to welcome the suggestions okay so i am telling this inappropriate wheelchair and appropriate wheelchair and all those things there is a user speaking what is a appropriate wheelchair means to her so can we hear from her just uh just a, a two minutes video we can hear from her what she's saying appropriate wheelchairs to her Yeah, it is like it's energetic video. Whenever I see this video, it's a kind of energy it flows into me. So this is where our role comes in. So when you provide a right wheelchair to a person which suits their need and suits their environment, and then if they are productive, so what else the user wanted? So that's what the user wanted. So the appropriate wheelchair should meet their user need and their environment and provides a good support that's where they they productive in their livelihoods their education or whatever recreations play games whatever so that's how a wheelchair means to a user so that's where our role as a professionals our role comes uh, to provide a right wheelchair so why we are emphasizing now which is not now from the long ago the need the need is so much growing. The global need, if you see for a wheelchair, it is one percentage of the global population, which is around 70 million. Whereas in India, you can see around 6.1 million people who has mobility disabilities may need a wheelchair. Again, it, the census of India is saying it is, this is in 2011. You imagine over a course of 10 years, how many accidents, how many lifestyle diseases, how many various uh, forms of disabilities, it has grown now. It is not now 6.1 million yet, yet to receive the new censuses. So if you see the, the need is so huge, that's where our role also it is more important. But often what is happening is the wheelchairs are donated, the purchased and donated, 
or it is just gifted if somebody in our family member if somebody is not well or it is just gifted i, I bought a good wheelchair because too, you can sit upright and then i can just take you outside this is what this approach is there but that is not a really a good approach even the donation can be in appropriate way following the different steps of the service provisions even the gifts can be given following the, all the steps taken to the service provision places service professionals they do assessment they do prescription they do fitting so all those things if be done it is a right approach we are not saying the donation or purchase or a gift it is not uh, right so we are saying they are doing a good heart but if it is done in a right way it is affecting or it is useful more and more for the wheelchair users or children or people with disabilities or everybody so that's where our role comes to educate and make the aware of the people who are uh, giving away the wheelchairs or who are gifting the wheelchair yeah so now comes who needs the wheelchair you know the need the need is huge in the need in india who needs the wheelchair so in 2016 uh, government of india came out with a list of the categorize the disabilities under this 21 sections even if you take the under the 21 sections of the disability we have a uh, highlighted you can see in the red mark highlighted in red bullets that is seven common conditions locomotor disability children with cerebral palsy or adults with cerebral palsy muscular dystrophy people with muscular dystrophy people with parkinson's disease people with uh, multiple sclerosis or chronic neurological conditions or multiple disabilities including deaf and blindness so these all common people are common disabilities may need the wheelchair again it may not be the same it should meet their need it should meet their environment it should be appropriate to them so this is just a uh, overview of the uh, conditions what we are seeing but even out of this also there are different condition names are available and different uh, 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 categories are available that that may all may fall under the locomotor disabilities who who may not able to walk or who may have a finding difficulty in walking those people definitely need a wheelchair so that's how uh, the right wheelchair need help for them among these people among these categories of conditions also there are there are two three levels are, are divided by uh, who as well as the various stakeholders uh, there are three different levels of the wheelchair users are available one is the basic level wheelchair users intermediate level wheelchair users and complex level wheelchair users so the first and foremost we can go for the we can just discuss about the basic level wheelchair users who are they so they are the people they have only the walking problem they have a good balance they can just sit upright only problem in walking they may find so much difficulty and uh, those kind of people are called as a basic level user they they may not require any additional supports and next level goes next difficult level next difficult level we can say intermediate level so intermediate level users they need some support to make themselves upright like for example i am just uh, taking rest this uh, uh, table uh, table support to make myself upright this is comfortable for me or sometimes i may take a backrest to support also that may be comfortable so if i'm not able to maintain my posture if i'm taking some support i need some support means so those kind of people all intermediate level they need some sort of uh, a postural support extra supports for the trunk or a head or a various body parts so when next moves to the next level of users there are more complicated you know, they are called as a complex users the complex users are who so they they need to be kind of uh, uh, need a more support to handle them they may not be able to support themselves they need an external person or external extra supports to maintain their balance or to sit upright so those are the people uh, called as a complex users many times they may not be able to achieve their neutral position neutral sitting position like how when you sit in the wheelchair or when you sit in a chair we sit trunk upright legs bent to the 90 degree foot bends to the 90 degree so these are all called as neutral sitting posture but when when it comes to the complex conditions many times it is unable to achieve their neutral sitting position they may oftenly need a custom supports to make themselves but in many situations, what happens, we have one wheelchair with not much supports are given appropriately. So that's where our role comes here to provide a right wheelchair for right people. 
yeah so we have seen the different types of conditions and then different type of uh, abilities or different types of the users and uh, here it comes to the types of wheelchairs what type of wheelchairs we can it will be helpful for these kind of different group of people so i have categorized uh, here into a two categories only one is the everyday manual wheelchairs or motorized wheelchairs another one is sports wheelchairs these are the major categories so whatever commonly we are seeing as a manual wheelchairs we may use in everyday it may be in a hospital use or it may be in a household use or whatever use that is called everyday wheelchairs a sports wheelchair is a specific purposes a person may use for a specific purpose the sports wheelchairs are designed so these are the two major categories in this i am not going to talk much on the motorized wheelchair because in the motorized wheelchair the options of mobility is more of motorized the person may use any uh, hand buttons or head sub head uh, operation buttons so that way they will have the movements otherwise the many features like backrest or a seat or a footrest so these all features are more or less similar to the manual wheelchair so what are the manual everyday wheelchairs are available you can see here i just bought it just a small common uh, wheelchairs i bought it here there are there are in the market there are very varieties of many varieties many colors many designs are available i just bought it here just for an overview the first picture on my left hand side the top one you can see here this is a folding wheelchair which is very active and uh, many many places we can see in hospitals people, uh, uh, wheelchairs are folded and kept at some place some people home that is folded and kept it. this is a folding wheelchair which is very much useful for transport purposes and it comes to this side on the right hand side this picture this is a non folding rigid wheelchair some wheelchairs are uh, folding some wheelchairs are not folding so this is our non folding wheelchair this is more stable enough compared to the folding wheelchairs and this is very active and then the wheels and things if you see it helps in a different environments next comes to the down one down one you can see the two di two different uh, pictures so that is brought together one is this one is the long three wheeler wheelchair this this is one different type of wheelchair it is very much interested by the people in uh, living in a rural environment or uh, uh, people people living in uneven surfaces or rugged surfaces for those people those places this wheelchair gives a good good Uh, environmental support for them it stays for their longer uh, environmental conditions and then it it stays for a longer duration when they are using in their environment again it has again all the basic components of postural supports like a seat backrest footrest even you can modify anything whatever it is required for the users it has one advantage what is that one is like you can see here the extra attachment which can be given as a tricycle also so if this attachment is attached to this it will act as a tricycle so uh, we have seen traditionally in many places even in the roads or any donation camps we have seen the tricycles are just a single device so it can just go it is just parked outside it cannot taken in, inside the house or inside the office or inside the working place but in this particular model it's an advantage here yes. it can be attached or detached by user itself so the user can use this one as a wheelchair also a tricycle if so for example if some user is living a 2 km away from their house so they can use this one as a tricycle and then just detach this and keep it outside the wheelchair can be used inside the office or inside the workplace or inside the workshop or wherever people can use people are using this very much so these are the everyday common wheelchairs are available in market again i i, I would like to mention this is just a commonly brought it but in the market in the outside world there are many many different types of wheelchairs are available again it falls in a different category is folding non folding tricycle three wheeler like that are different types so we need to see the individual features of the wheelchairs only when describing for a users it can be a front caster wheel which can navigate a different environment in the uh, village area or uh, urban area a rear wheel which is matted air filled or not filled or uh, like uh, what to say the inner tube a rigid inner tube is there or tubeless is there so there are different mechanisms even some of the wheelchairs are coming with the hydraulic mechanisms and all so there are different things are available we need to match because like uh, like a dress materials how we have we need to match according to the size and the purpose of the users and need of the wheelchair users 
Yeah. Now comes to the children type. Commonly, we have seen some of the active wheelchairs, children type active wheelchairs, which the child can push. For a basic level users, this left hand side picture is there. No, so these type of wheelchairs would be really good. They can they don't end up having extra supports, and they can just who has a, a kind of uh, only the walking problem, they can use this wheelchair. Whereas the picture on my right hand side, it has many supports for the neck, head, trunk supports on the straps, lap trays, and then trunk side support, foot straps, even you can see the here, the, uh, the wheel guard. So these are all extra things which helps for a child to be upright, even for young children, some of the cerebral palsy children, this helps for developing their milestones, sitting milestones or uh, hand usage, hand functions. But these all things, uh, it will help you to develop. So the children wheelchair is having a two different types. One is a basic level uh, uh, wheelchair, active wheelchair we say. Another one is a supportive seat, which helps to support the posture of the child for the development. So these are the common everyday wheelchairs for the adult and children we can see. Again, in the children also varieties are available, folding, non-folding, all the options are available in the market. The last type, what I can say is a sports wheelchair. So many of us might have uh, heard about the Paralympics. So that is mainly for the people with disabilities participating in a various sports activities. So one of the uh, uh, sports activities are the sports wheelchairs are available. So we can say the basketball wheelchairs, uh, cricket wheelchair, wheelchair cricket, uh, table tennis wheelchair, long tennis wheelchair. People do some of the uh, racing wheelchairs. So there are different types of wheelchairs uh, for a different sports it is available. Again, each sports have their own uh, you know, the guidelines or uh, things to have the supports and uh, the uh, what to say the ergonomics in the wheelchair it is described so the sports wheelchair is an exclusive section which helps for many people and in india i don't know how many of people are aware from india many people are representing india in the outside the world uh, using the wheelchair and then they are getting the medals and like prize for India, so representing India. So it is very much uh, needed of the hour in India uh, as a sports wheelchair, not only the everyday wheelchairs, even the sports wheelchairs. Again, that also not just like that we cannot give, that also need to be assessed, prescribed, and do the modifications and things. Then the person can be more productive and then they can get many medals for us. Okay, so these are the common uh, types of wheelchairs that are available uh, around the world and uh, it is helpful for the users yes this one thing when when it comes to the wheelchair the first and foremost things which i look for is whether the wheelchair is having a cushion so how many of you think how many of you seen the cushion in the wheelchair uh, maybe before my practice i have not seen even during my practices also in many places wheelchairs do not have a cushion just imagine uh, uh, the ancient, like a previous, maybe 10, 10, 15 years back, maybe you can ask your father or also our father or your parents or your older people in home, uh, how the, in a common places the chairs and tables will be there. It will be like a metal chair or plastic chair. Even in some of the places still the people are practicing the same thing. But now in the recent scenarios, if you see, Everything is like a sofa, well cushioned, and we need. We also don't prefer the plastic chairs. We just go and uh, find out any, any common places anywhere. If you see, even you, you can, yeah, I can imagine my example. If you go to hospitals, there are like a metal chairs will be there. There are like a so, sofa kind of uh, support will be there. We prefer that one only because which is comfortable, isn't it? Similarly, you think of the wheelchair users sitting long duration in the wheelchair, how the comfort is important. Again, the, the purpose of cushion is not only the comfort. You can see in this picture, this particular cushion gives the postural support. This particular cushion gives the pressure relief who have a sensory issues. This particular cushion gives postural support as well as the pressure relief, like that. So different cushions have a different functions. And if you see any wheelchair, think if the cushion is not there, wheelchair is not complete ensure the wheelchair is provided with cushion it can be ready-made cushion or it can be customized cushion but again the cushion also should be 
appropriate for the user's need. The user's needs are postural support, pressure relief, comfort. So these are the common things. So just a one key message you can take from here. Wheelchair without cushion is incomplete. Make sure when you see anybody suggest them or prescribe them or guide them where to get a good cushion. Yes, now we have seen the need. We have seen the users uh, who are the different types of basic intermediate and complex need of wheelchair users. We have seen the, what are the common types of wheelchairs are available. Now, how to get an appropriate wheelchair for that person? So that's where uh, the eight-step approach of WHO is there. Again, even in a common uh, medical uh, 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 needs, when we go to hospitals, this uh, similar procedures only. It is nothing, something different. But again, it is missing. That's why the emphasis is here. So what are those? A referral and appointment. The first thing. So you link. Uh, commonly, if we get a fever or if we get any medical problems, link. We are referred to some of the hospitals. That's called the referral and appointment. Here it comes to the wheelchair services or wheelchair uh, uh, professionals like occupational therapist or physiotherapist or prosthetist. Or prosthetist. So to these kind of people, professionals, it will be referred. Then those guys, what they do? They do an assessment, exclusive assessment of the person and prescribe a right wheelchair like a, what type of wheelchair what kind of features required in the wheelchair those kind of things we have to prescribe and again funding is a big thing which who brought into the picture because in uh, outside world the wheelchair is so costly a good wheelchair or appropriate wheelchair is a bit costly as well as uh, some of the wheelchairs are available but people are not aware so that is also we need to understand even the funding is available and the wheelchair cost also less but where to order it where to go for an appropriate wheelchair. That is also one of the key things. That's why the WHO approach here, they bought it. And after you get the wheelchair, what can be done? The next step is the product preparation. That is a wheelchair preparation. If a ready wheelchair, features are available. We can adjust. Not available, we need to modify. That is called adaptations, which we are going to see in the future slides, near future slides. After preparing, for example, what we are going to do? Check. Whether it is fitting for me, whether it is useful for me, it is meeting my uh, physical abilities. So those all things we need to check it uh, as a fitting and provide some training on that. And uh, after after training and delivery, after training, you will be giving the wheelchair to the users. The wheelchair happily takes to the home. But afterwards, what happens? That's where our follow up. Uh, is important. Even the doctors, when you go, they give the medicine, they prescribe the medicines, they will instruct you take two times, three times, before food, after food, all those things. Then that training, we get it. We have all the things. Then again, what doctor says, after one week, you have to come and visit. And if if we go to the same doctor, some family doctors will say, I told you last time to come for a follow-up. You did not turn up. This is what usually in wheelchair services also happen. So why the follow-up is important the people, the wheelchair users may need extra additional information, extra additional trainings, uh, advancements. We, we, we might have heard of the regressive conditions and progressive conditions. Like uh, some people will go worsen the conditions. Uh, initially, they will be good. After some period, their physical conditions will go worse. And some people will go improve. So initially, they will not, they'll be very bad in the physical conditions or physical ability over a course of rehabilitation from the occupational therapist or physiotherapist or prosthetist or prosthetist, their conditions will be improving. So in the wheelchair, the alterations may, may vary during the follow-up. So that's how the follow-up also one of the key why the WHO brought in here. So to summarize, these are the eight steps we need to follow. But again, it is individual practices in a hospital or an organization or a rehabilitation institutions. The processes may be varying, not exactly the same way. It may be merged in some of the their services. For example, the referral and appointment will be handled by some of the receptionists. Here, the professional's need may not be available, may not be required. So it is not mandatory we have to do everything. But ensure, as a professional, these are all things are followed. So maybe our as a professionals, our core professionals of the healthcare, oh, we can say assessment, prescription, some places preparations, some places of fitting, user training, follow up. So maximum the number two, number three, five, six, seven, eight. So these all our roles are important. Maybe 
for a one and fourth we may indirectly help them make them aware this is the services available and this is where the funding is available and this is where the wheelchair is available so these are all the awareness things we will be doing we will be supporting our institutions hospitals or an organizations or an, uh, colleges or whatever it is so as a whole the eight step service provision we need to follow again how we are following it is contextually different from the organizations to organizations institutions to institutions it is changing yep okay so we have seen uh, the eight step approach i wanted to bring only the assessment here why so many of us know assessment is very much important even in our uh, occupational therapy physiotherapy or prosthetics and other special education speech therapy or whatever the therapy or rehabilitation we do the assessment is very much key so what we are finding based on that only our treatment will be there our approach will be there our rehabilitation will be there so that's how we are bringing the importance of assessment is very much important so what is what we are going to do in assessment so we are doing the general informations that is very common to everybody but when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the wheelchairs uh, lifestyle assessment is very much important what is that lifestyle environment lifestyle assessment that's that's called assessing their where they are living what they are going to do it can be an environment or it can be kind of work what they do it's a desktop work or their agriculture work somewhere in the flour mill or somewhere in the electrician somewhere in the workshop anything it could be you can think of and then how many times they need to transfer themselves so this is also very much important so based on this lifestyle assessment there are various components need to be considered in the wheelchair that's why this lifestyle assessment is very much important and as as an occupational therapist or a physiotherapist or positive health therapist i think we do this but when it comes to the wheelchair many places it is missing so we need to find it out how we are going to capture this and then that links to the appropriate pitch next comes to the physical assessment measurements and guide for prescription so this all information will help to guide prescribe a right wheelchair and right adaptations for that particular user so i think you all agree assessment is very key now comes to the physical assessment particularly what is done in the physical assessment because we are saying the measurement is okay no we we measure the size the size is enough if we know the size and then we know the lifestyle then that's enough no no that's not enough what what required that is called a physical assessment in the physical assessment the hip screenings and pelvic screenings are required because to sit the pelvis is the foundation the, the buttock the place the where we are sitting the thighs this is the foundation where we are sitting so that needs to be assessed how much it is flexible how much it is part way flexible how much it is neutral so those things will to do through the hand simulations during through the lying supports or during the lying uh, uh, assessments we need to find it out so through the findings from here we need to prescribe the extra supports if required you can see in this picture also between these girls you can see some of the forms are available they are just trying out during in even in lying down also that's how this assessment process will be there there are various tools are used like forms goniometers measuring tapes and uh, full blocks and extra additional supports to make the child or person upright or close to upright so this is one part of the physical assessment that is called pelvic hip screening and hand simulation so following this measurements so we all know common measurements to take we say the seat width seat depth back rest height this is a common measurement even before my practice i used to do the same thing even now also but what key things we need to consider in the basic measurements because the preparation is very much important it is not just we are taking the measurement even for measurements we need to take some key informations or key preparations is required maybe i i play a video how uh, uh, measurement is happening and what key things you need to consider you can all observe maybe half of the video is mostly for preparation only another half only the measurements are going on you can just see this video you get an understanding अच्छा 
Yes, so I think you got some idea. So measurements, everybody, yes, we do. That, that we are familiar with. That's a really good one. And uh, the preparations, you see how ensuring the upright posture and uh, ensuring the foot is supported where the person is safe, person is balanced. You Have you all observed that this uh, therapist was talking to the user, the wheelchair user, the spinal cord injured person, and explaining him i'm just taking this measurement this is how this helps and this is how so this is very much important in the measurement because what happens sometimes no they can give a clue this is how my body parts are doing and this is how so interacting with the users during the measurements and during the whole process of assessment is very much important so that that gives a clue to think and uh, to get select the right support for the people so uh, this is again what you have seen is a basic level measurement you know the adaptations. We we have seen this intermediate level wheelchair users in the previous slide. Complex level wheelchair users we have seen in the previous slide, isn't it? So you imagine for them this much measurement is not sufficient. So there are various measurements we need to take it for pelvic support, for a trunk support, or a head support, or lab board support, or straps. So for what? Those are all for the adaptations in the wheelchairs. So what measurements? You can see in this picture also there are different extra attachments are provided, lap tray, or arm rest, or trunk side supports, or like that. These are examples of what I'm saying, but again, it is based on the needs. This is another example I can bring in here. This is the kind of a prescription form, which has all the measurements. On the right-hand side, you can see the form, fill the form. So whatever the extra supports are required, it is drawn, designed, with all the measurements. Can you see here the 300, 380, 320? These are all measurements of the users. It can be seat width, seat depth, foot rest height, back rest height, trunk, uh, what to say, the trunk width, and then how much height we want the trunk support, and then how much depth we want the trunk support, how much thickness the support should be there. See, one support only you take, for example, you take a trunk support only, for the trunk support only you need to take so many measurements, like a height of the trunk support, depth of the trunk support, width of the trunk support, and then in that height also, how much long the trunk support should be there, you imagine, so for the adaptation also measurements are very much important, that's why in the assessment, complete throughout the after the uh, uh, hand simulation or a pelvic screening we need to find out what are the measurements or what are the adaptations required based on that we have to list it out and then take each and every measurement so that really importance for the preparation for the next level of the wheelchair service provision technical person whoever is involved into preparation uh, for them these measurements will be very much helpful this is just an example here it is shown but it is contextually different from user to user 
there are some samples I can bring in here. What are the some adaptations we have done in our experiences? We can see here this guy is a, a triple amputee, one hand and two legs got amputated, and uh, uh, he needs a mobility device. And he chooses this wheelchair, and uh, this this particular front portion is as a, as a gear, like a changing the direction. So one hand he pushes, like one side he pushes, another side he pushes. After pushing again, he needed some direction, isn't it? So this this is how he just helps for one hand only for the direction. If this is not there, it, he is finding difficulty to push the wheelchair. So this is one adaptation along with that because when he is moving around because the the uh, base of support or stability is very very less because both the legs are not there because weights are not falling in the front and uh, he has lost one hand so the whole weight is in particular place it should not fall on sides so that's how the side supports are given on this wheelchair you can see this young girl is a muscular dystrophy her head just falls backward and her trunk goes sideways these are the common issues she has so for her some trunk supports some trunk adaptations here in the uh, thing to keep her upright so that at least if she lifts the hand you before what happens without this modification she, if she lifts, lifts her hand she just slowly goes sideways again she has to balance so she will not do anything so imagine now this small support helps her to keep upright if she lifts the hands also the support is keeping her in place so that if she wants to write or she, if she wants to take a cup of water or if she wants to play also because at this age the play is important isn't it so how much a small support is giving her a bigger impact in their life because these are all hidden people may not be able to express if you give just wheelchair it will not be appropriate for them so giving with adaptations will be more appropriate that's what we call it as users need the users need is to keep herself upright when she is lifting the hand see the need is not just moving not just studying focusing into the physical and real life need that's how the important uh, assessment uh, is important to do in a detailed way you can see this is another one the whole chair is modified the seats are taken out here the backrest like if a manufacturer or the wheelchair seller is seen this means what you have done my with the new wheelchair they will be telling because see, that's not the need for that particular user isn't it so that whole upholstery is taken out the good wooden or solid support is required for some people so it, it is needed means we can do it it is possible again it is in a less resource setting you need to go anywhere uh, hi-fi places and all the plywood is very much uh, available the foam what is here it is very much available in community you can do very easily but you need to have a knowledge and skills for that so that that's where uh, the nip med or motivation we are there to support you guys if you need any training programs you can contact us so there are another adaptations you can see this guy need to do some work in the office so accordingly the lab tray is arranged for him so that this extra is there. if he removes this uh, board he can use this one as a hand support like a arm rest some depth adjustments this small guy you can see how much functional he is if he is he has to push the wheelchair means the wheelchair wheel is far behind and then he is just dumped inside the wheelchair he is losing his balance if he lifts his hands so after giving a good support you can see here how much he is having a good uh, uh, functional activity here so finally what i'm trying to say is there are various adaptations WHO as well as the other other things are available and uh, this is the part of the intermediate level training of the WHO what the poster you are seeing here it has covered seat backrest footrest various various body parts and various extra adaptations to be provided for the people and uh, after the adaptations given the next step i would like to emphasize here the right fitting so what we are doing is the fitting process during the fitting process we need to see see imagine if a child is given with a big chair or big shoes it may not be functional the child may not use a good correct fitted device a correct fitted shoes makes a big difference for the child the child can be independent you can see even this this guy on the left hand side if you give a small size of wheelchair with like this he would have performed himself very well otherwise now what he has to do he has to wait for somebody to push for him he cannot even go for a drinking cup of uh, like a water or not just able to go and see what their friends are playing just seeing also it is fine if the uh, mental ability is not there or hand ability is not fine so 
even a good wheelchair can help them to sit upright and watch and that helps for the people and following this this is what i was just telling the user training the seventh step of the uh, the who approach what it says is the user training it is more of like a, how to handle you, you imagine if you go for uh, the purchasing a dress usually what the uh, people the uh, like some stores they will say sir don't don't do a uh, hand wash put it a uh, dry wash and uh, don't uh, do any hand wash put it in the machine and they will say dry it in the shade not in the sunlight for a dress they are giving that much instructions you imagine a wheelchair is a second leg or a home for the user and how much they should uh, familiar with their wheelchair and then familiar with the skills to easily or safely to handle them even if the person is not able maybe the carer or parents also very much important uh, to understand what the wheelchair is and how to handle how to fold the wheelchair or how to operate the different uh, options in the wheelchair pressure relief and looking after the wheelchair even the follow up one is there the, uh, looking after the wheelchair is very much important if the person is not taught and then they may not perform very well and then the wheelchair will go uh, damage but like we do our bike or car servicing every uh, then and there so similarly the wheelchair also important otherwise it will break and then it will not be kind of uh, useful for the user and then it will not be safe again it will go in, into an inappropriate way so so the steps completed after the user training and follow up then that that complete steps are called as a like a who's eight step service provision that's how the person will get an appropriate wheelchair so the eight steps can i revise a referral and appointment that's the first step somebody is just referred to you and you do the assessment and assessment that is the second step then prescribe a right wheelchair that is the third step and arrange a funding and ordering it could be by user or by you or referring anything that is funding and ordering is the fourth step fifth step is preparation wheelchair preparation the sixth step is do the fitting check whether it is okay or not or any alteration required those things we need to check it fitting check the seventh step is the skill training or user training we need to do it the last step is follow up maintenance and repairs if anything so these are the eight step if you follow for a user the person can get a good wheelchair and appropriate wheelchairs for them and they can use for a long thing that way if you do what happens there are some examples i can just bring it here just a small case study kind you can be productive like this before the inappropriate wheelchair and appropriate wheelchair you can see they can be enjoying joy of enabling them making them independent with a good wheelchair and right wheelchairs gender inclusion again you can bring the gender into the mainstream we are saying we need to bring the uh, like a female into the mainstream and all those things there are various things are thing even the good wheelchair also brings them you can see this uh, left hand uh, right hand side picture this lady started playing cricket she is going to play for the district uh, team in the in the uh, village so these are all things are possible with the right wheelchair age doesn't matter this old man from the rural kolkata he he after receiving the good wheelchair he was participated in the wheelchair marathon in kolkata he was able to push a little and then definitely assistance was provided that's fine but still age doesn't matter for if you give a right wheelchair for them so ultimately providing a right wheelchair improves a good quality of life for anybody even it includes wheelchair users children even their families as well because many times the family members are carrying the huge or uh, elderly people are lifting them putting them so it's it's horrible so a good wheelchair will improve the quality of life of the users as well as the family members so how you can equip this are all overview what we have given it so how you can equip yourself so through the different various courses which even nipmud used to run so these are all the, the different wheelchair uh, training uh, courses are available short term courses basic level intermediate level managers and stakeholders level training of trainers how to deliver this kind of packages so these are all different levels and skills of uh, training packages are available you can contact nipmud or you can contact motivation we can help you to equip your knowledge and skills so that many people with disabilities gets uh, miracles in their life thank you thank you for your time and uh, i am just uh, open now for any questions we can just discuss or i'm just handing over to organizers moderator thank you thanks a lot for your wonderful session sir
I hope before I'm going to brief the session, I would like to hear from the participants, either it's a suggestion or even if you are having any queries, uh, you are most welcome to share your views as well as ask questions for next five minutes. So if anybody is interested, please go ahead. I hope that most of the participants are more satisfied with your presentation, sir. So I take the privilege to ask you a few questions. So you have showed many varieties of adaptations, especially on the seating. Yeah. So would it take much cost for me to make the adaptations or will it be viable for me at even to the community setup? Uh, it's, a, it's a good question. Like again, it depends on what kind of modification we are looking for. A simple modifications may not be costly that much. Again, multiplication of the modifications we need to see. Uh, you have seen in one picture, I was just telling the plywoods and common foams. These are all very much easily available in the community. Even the bike making uh, people, uh, car mechanic people, so they have that car seat making similar. So that way we can make the foam modifications or uh, uh, seat modifications or a headrest modification or whatever modification based on that need. So it may not be that costly, but when it is adding too much, it may be a little costly because the numbers are growing, isn't it, that way? But again, most of the wheelchairs, uh, uh, supportive seat wheelchairs will come with the extra supports. That, that may not be a kind of a, like kind of more costly, I feel. So, uh, in addition to that, you have, uh, I would like to add one more thing uh, from you. Uh, that is, uh, you have mentioned that uh, as a profession, we're supposed to do these sort of adaptations. And other than my text knowledge and what are the skills i supposed to gain to do these sort of assessment? Because we are the upcoming profession, so many upcoming professions are there in that uh, webinar. Mm -hmm. So, what are the advice you are giving for this? to uh, do the modifications? What are the knowledge or skills we're supposed to gain before we are going for the wheelchair services? Yes, yes, it is really a good uh, eye-opening question. Even uh, it's like many times what happens, like uh, we have the restrictions of like, we are professionals, we cannot cut, do and all those things, the technical things. So we can identify those kind of technical bits separately. But as a clinic clinicians, like a physiotherapist, occupational therapist, or prosthetist, or the various professionals, we as a professionals, we should equip with the knowledge and skills on the, that eight steps approach. All the eight steps, what is a by role? What exactly the assessment means? What all the common things I'll be doing? What are the postural deviations I should understand? And then uh, hands-on skills on how to do the various pelvics and hip screenings. So those are all things if we are able to equip ourselves and then it will be easy to guide the technical people or to guide the people whoever is going to the uh, modifications or adaptations. So that much, it is not necessary always we have to do cut, stick, and all those things. At least if you have the knowledge, that's fine. You can, uh, like what to say, guide somebody. Even in a rural community, if you know the knowledge, maybe even nowadays this COVID has made everybody not to visit physically and uh, or minimize the physical visits. Maybe virtually we can say this is how you can just cut and this, this much measurements you can make it, you can cut and make it. So that kind of instructions as a professionals we need to understand so more of clinical perspective if we are able to equip ourselves that's more than sufficient and we can work with the, any type of clinicians or technicians to get a good adaptations hope, hope this is uh, useful i think it's a large topic again to discuss. thank you sir and one more question asked by the participant sir am i audible yeah 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 uh, okay, sir. So one more question I would like to add, sir. So one yeah. of our participants asked, so what are the adaptations we're supposed to do for relieving pressure as well as to avoid forward falling or as uh, leaning out the forward side from the seat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, see, uh, it's a <laughs> good straightforward questions. 
but we need to assess that this is what the assessment is comes so what happens many times we are seeing the falling forward or that person is sliding sideways that this way so this is the visible thing what we can see even before my practice i used to see that way but when it comes to the assessment we need to find where the problem starts the problem starts with the wheelchair or the problem starts with the pelvis or the problem starts with the trunk or the problem starts with where so that assessment if we are able to find then it is really good it gives a overview so usually the falling forward or falling sideways and all it is more to do with the pelvis supports so we need to find first the pelvis support is given properly or not uh, it it is more of uh, cushions various types of cushions we call it as like a, a anterior pelvic tilt cushion and pre seat bone shelf cushion and uh, uh, open open seat to backrest angle cushion there are different levels of cushion we need to find it out what's the reason that's how the assessment is important so without the assessment it is difficult for me to answer straight forward so but start with pelvis assess the pelvis and based on that we can find some adaptations thanks for sharing your knowledge sir so i hope uh, we can wind up the session before i am going to wind up the session i would like to brief the total uh, what the topics we have cover covered so you have started from the introduction of wheelchair and what are the difference between wheelchair and appropriate wheelchair and you have given a orientation about varieties of wheelchairs and what are the importance of making or accommodating a cushion in that wheelchair and you have oriented us about the procedures which the who follows the eight step procedures for wheelchair services and then you have intro give an introduction about the how we supposed to do the measurements as well as the assessments in both the therapist aspect as well as the individual views and further to this you have added upon on that possible adaptations and standard procedures for those things and i hope that it's a wonderful session for all of us and i don't doubt about that and thanks for sharing your knowledge with us sir uh, with the time limit you have covered most of the topics and we are looking forward to work with you in the near future to conduct any series of seminar and thanks a lot once again mr sudhakar sir and the motivation india and i would like to thank all the participants for your patience and your interest and i am thanking our head of the department as well as director and apmd thanks a lot we look forward to meet you all once again thank you so much thank you thank you all thank you thank you